subscribe to Tetra Bit Gaming. Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. And we're back for the third and what I thought would be the last Lost Bits video for this game, but boy was I wrong. This is like the third time where I thought I was done writing the script, but just more and more stuff keeps popping up to talk about. Now we've already covered a whole bunch of stuff from unused areas, models, and more. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, I highly recommend you do. Also really quick before we jump in, recently I launched a new channel for short clips of past videos and streams, so if you'd be interested in that, consider checking it out and I hope to see you there in the comments. Anyways, this video is going to be another banger, we're going to talk about scrapped menus, modes, and more. So with all that said, smash the like button for a free complimentary map, it's time to find some more Lost Bits. Alright, so let's kick things off with a good one here. It turns out that much like many past Five Nights at Freddy's games, there were once plans to include an extras option to the main menu of the game. And although it was scrapped from normal play, by modifying the game's files it can apparently actually still be loaded in. This extras option would have led to another submenu with several other things to choose from. We got a shortcut to playing the game's minigames and office games, the character gallery we went over in a previous video, a button to play the game's credits, which for whatever reason doesn't work here, as well as a dedicated button for DLC. Now hopefully this is free DLC that they add, or at the very least they clean up the base game's bugs and add in some of the unused content that's already in the files before they start charging for more content. This menu also has a scrap survival mode. I want to spend a bit more time analyzing and researching how this mode works, so like I said in the intro, I've decided I'm going to make yet another video for this, as I really think it deserves to be discussed in a bit more depth. So, once again, stay tuned for that, and if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed if you want to be notified as soon as it's up. Anyways, back to the menu here, the minigames option brings up a list of the minigames found in the game, including Balloon Boy, Fazer Blast, and all of the Princess Quest games. You'll also see a whole bunch of games here that aren't normally accessible, such as the scrapped Chica's Feeding Frenzy I went over in a previous video, and similarly in that video I also went over 9 unused holes for Gator Golf, and judging by this menu, it looks like there was actually once planned to be a second Gator Golf arcade cabinet in the game that would have featured those unused holes. Then next are battle segments with Vanny and Burn Trap. The Vanny button here doesn't work at all, as whatever Vanny battle there might have once been, I guess was completely removed, and the Burn Trap one just takes you to the area just before the underground pizzeria. Then lastly on this menu is Light Test. Now, based on the name alone, I can only assume that this was an option for testing lighting, but there seems to be a bit more to it than that. From what I gathered, this seems to load you into what looks to be an earlier version of the Pizzaplex, where everything appears much darker than normal, and more areas are loaded in the distance, sometimes not for the better, as it makes stuff look weird. For example, we can see the window texture you see in the second floor area down here, which is pretty odd. Secondly, this version of the Pizzaplex features some areas that seem to have been removed from the final version. In addition to featuring the unused VIP room and kitchen I went over in my first Lost Bits video on this game, there's also this hallway that would have connected the main lobby to the atrium as well as to the Fazcade. Just like some of the other changes to the layout of this map we discussed in previous videos, I can only assume this was removed in favor of just using the elevators to go between the areas, since having all these areas loaded in at once might have been deemed too demanding on hardware. It's really too bad though, cause this shortcut between areas would have been super nifty. A short jog to Fazcade here is way better than having to go through this elevator, go upstairs here in the atrium, and then take that elevator too. Also, this hallway appears to show that there was once planned to be an entrance to it right here in the atrium. Again, big shame this was removed. Additionally, in this removed hallway, we can partially see the Roxy's Raceway animation that I went over in my last video. But here, it's also lacking most of the cool Mario Kart references that are seen in the full animation. It's kind of funny that the character whose section of the Pizzaplex this ad was made after is the only character whose animation of this is never seen as Freddy's is seen here, and then Chica and Monty's are seen in this hallway. Anyways, let's get back to the menu stuff. With only about half of the options on this menu here actually being normally found in the game, it's no wonder why this menu was scrapped. 
Next up, Office Games would let the player quickly load into a certain part of the game, and here, highlighted in red, we can see what appears to be three segments of the game that never made the cut. Roxy Racers was probably the scrapped karting segment we went over in my last video, and although you might be thinking Endogeddon might be the segment where you first encounter the Endos that chase you, and that Pizza Sim could be the segment where you control the Pizza Bot, these three options are the only ones that don't work on this menu, so it's more likely that these were completely different sections that were scrapped. And since this list appears to be in a chronological order and when you see them in the game, these might have been some late or post-game segments that were cut. Next up here, I just wanted to quickly mention a few more areas that go normally unused in this game. The first of these is actually the area just outside the main lobby entrance to the Pizza Plex. Now you can briefly see outside before the doors close, but surprisingly there's actually a decent amount of stuff there. There's a pickup, drop-off, roundabout thing near the doors for cars, a whole bunch of trees and light posts, as well as this security or ticketing booth. Interestingly, this entire area also has working collision implemented, allowing Gregory to run around here. This makes me think that perhaps at some point in development, there were plans to have this outside area playable too, or it might have been used for a cutscene or something. Then next, another normally inaccessible area is just behind this door here. Now normally, this is where you go to finish the game for one of the endings, and when you interact with the door, the game will instantly just cut to the end cutscene. Well, turns out there's actually a fully modeled fire escape area behind these doors here. It even has the large exit text that's seen in this comic panel here. Not a huge loss, but kinda strange that they didn't at least have the player running up these stairs before the ending, and instead just cut it here. Then similarly, next to another area where you can end the game, there's this door that you can't normally go through. But behind this door is a short hallway with another door at the end, that surprisingly also swings open when you get close to it. Unfortunately behind it is just a brick wall, but I'm inclined to believe that this too might have once been planned for some sort of ending sequence. Now before we get to more unused stuff, I just want to quickly correct something from the last video. It turns out that the hand model I mentioned that was thought to be unused actually does appear very briefly in the game at Roxy's salon here. They are very easy to miss, but yep, here they are. So I guess unfortunately these weren't from a scrapped first person view or anything like that. Alright, anyways, next up there is a folder in the game's files titled Test Procedural Walls, and it contains various meshes and textures for various walls, big surprise. There's walls with openings of all sorts of sizes, as well as a whole bunch of textures for these walls, including bricks, chain link fences, a hedge, and more. Now, just based on the name, it seems like developers were testing for some sort of section in the game where various walls would be procedurally generated. And I can only assume this would have been for some sort of maze or something. If it really was indeed for a maze, this sounds like it could have made for a really cool segment, something way better than whatever this was. Next, there's an unused video file left in the game titled Hour 7 Menu. Now this file name pretty explicitly indicates it was meant to be seen in the background of the main menu, presumably once the player made it to 7am. However, this never gets used since it's impossible to ever normally save after 6am in the game, and even if you do via glitches or whatnot, this video still never shows up. Next up, we went over a whole bunch of unused graphics, voice lines, and text in the previous video, but even since then, a whole bunch more has been documented. First up for the graphics, there's this unused texture that appears to have been meant for some sort of skeleton or something. Currently, it's unclear what this would have been meant for exactly, but I assume maybe some skeletons might have once been planned to be seen in the underground area beneath the Pizzaplex. Whatever it was meant for though, the texture alone is certainly creepy all by itself. Then next up, there are several more unused voice lines that are left over in the game. And first are some for Roxy. This one has Roxy counting down for some sort of race, and it's likely this was meant for the scrapped go-kart race part of Roxy's raceway. On your marks, get set, go! Then also related to that section are a pair of unused voice lines for after you decommission Roxy. My face! My face! MY FACE! GIVE ME BACK MY EYES! It's a shame these were scrapped. You can almost feel the pain in these lines. 
Then next up for Chica, first are two alternate unused takes for her smelling a yummy pizza pie. I smell pizza! I smell pizza! I think either one of these sound better than the take that was used as it sounds like she's saying pizza instead of pizza. I smell pizza! Then next are some unused lines for Chica for when she would, I guess, spot Gregory in the pizza plex. Stop! There you are! I found you! Tag! You're it! It's currently unclear why these weren't used. Perhaps the developers felt there were already a sufficient number of these lines as is. Next are a pair of unused versions of Chica laughing and clucking, and these are apparently not the same as her sometimes clucking when getting stunned by the phaser blaster or camera. <laughs> then related to Chica, there are several unused voice lines dealing with the kitchen pizza bot segment in the game. The first of these appear to be early versions of the PizzaBot computer announcer voice lines, where at this point it was called the Fazbear Make Your Own Pizza Experience, instead of the Mega PizzaPlex Quick Delivery Virtual Ordering System. You have selected the full Fazbear Make Your Own Pizza Experience. We apologize for any delays or errors, as this feature is still in our beta testing phase. We apologize for any delays or errors, as this feature is still in our beta testing phase. Now, let's get started. Also, one of these lines implies you had a choice of choosing between cheese or pepperoni on the pizza instead of having to add both. Options, pepperoni or cheese. Then, in addition to these, there are also several unused voice lines for the pizza bot itself. Hello, who is there? It must be the wind. No, no, no. Not again. And there's also one featuring the early version of the staff bot voice we discussed in the last video. Oh no, Chica is in the kitchen. This is not good, not good. All of these appear to suggest that Chica would have had a more prominent role in this area as she might have chased the pizza bot around here while making the pizza, instead of just appearing at the end to destroy it. Next up we got some unused lines for Freddy himself. The first of these has Freddy basically questioning Gregory's sanity as he doesn't believe that Greg saw a large dancing rabbit lady. And yeah, you know, I guess that is a pretty hard thing to believe. Gregory, are you certain you have seen a dancing rabbit lady? I believe you if you say you have, but it is highly unlikely. I have not seen her, and she does not sound like a character we have at the Pizzaplex. Then secondly, there is an unused line for Freddy mentioning that his finger has a built-in lighter. This lighter is only ever seen in one of the comic panels in the VIP ending of the game, so it's unclear if this line would have just served as foreshadowing to this, or, as some believe, that this might have been intended for a scrapped animated cutscene for this ending, as there is also animation data for Freddy's model mouthing these words left over in the game. My finger doubles as a lighter. You know, for birthday candles. And creme brulee. And then lastly for Freddy here, there's also an unused line that appears to reveal what exactly is stored in these silos. Although I thought it could have been pizza sauce or something, turns out it's actually syrup for Fizzy Fads. Well done. You are near the Fizzy Faz syrup fat. You should be able to find your way to the main kitchen from here. I guess for a pizza plex the size of this one, they'd probably sell a whole bunch of beverages, so I guess this amount of Fizzy Faz goo makes sense. Next, we went over a whole bunch of unused staff bot voice lines in the last video, but turns out there are several others that also still currently go unused. These include numerous lines for the sentry bots, sewer bots, as well as even a sweeper bot, which might have been an early name for the mop bots. Some of these lines are pretty interesting, like the sentry bots claiming they always come back, as well as the sewer bots begging for help. Anyways, here's a run through of all these staff bot lines. Alert. Alert. Are you lost? Backup requested. Be sure to smile. Have you seen this boy? I always come back. I am a security officer. I am looking for intruders. I enjoy my job. I found the kid. Lost child found. Lost child reported. Security alert. Something over here. Staff only. Target located. The pizza plex is closed. The customer is always right. Come closer. Help me. Clean. 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 Not good enough. The floor is not going to clean itself. This must be cleaned. 
Now, interestingly, some of these lines, like Staff Only and Are You Lost, are also lines that Chica and Roxy use. And lastly, there are also a few more lines for Gregory I want to bring up here, and these seem to be ones that were meant for the Vanny ending. The first two here, once again, reinforce that there seems to have been once plans to have animated cutscenes for this ending, or at least they would have had voiceovers. Princess Quest 3? Dismantle Vanny! Dismantle Vanny! Uh, are you having fun yet? Punch it, Freddy! The last line there was more likely, however, probably meant for when Freddy busts open a gate with Monty's claws equipped. Next, there are numerous additional bits of subtitle text in the game for Freddy, and unfortunately, these don't seem to have any audio associated with them. In the interest of time, I won't be digging into all of these here, but highlights here include lines that suggest that Freddy could have been betrayed by Gregory and would then seemingly start hunting him down, Freddy begging the other animatronics to resist her, I assume Vanny, noting the name similarity between Vanny and Vanessa, and my favorite, mentioning a deluxe lock-in scavenger hunt event at the Pizzaplex where kids would be locked in overnight. And these were apparently discontinued due to legal reasons. Big surprise. Security Breach has so many unused bits of dialogue that I'm sure even after covering all of these, there's probably even more to be found. And while we're talking audio things, there's one more unused sound effect to go over. This is a very simple little fanfare that sounds very much like it would have been used in one of the arcade settings. And then, much like the jump scare sounds from other past FNAF games, although not fully unused, the jump scare sounds in Security Breach also are only partially heard as they're quickly cut off after they start. Some of them have a distinct difference that's only heard at the end of the clips, so honestly, until listening to these in full myself, I didn't even know there were different jump scare sounds. Anyways, here are the sound effects in full. Let's see just how much we've been missing. And now, congrats to you if you made it this far into the video as saving what I think is the best for last, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach actually has a debug mode left over in the game's files, and it's still mostly functional to boot. Now you do have to mod the files in order to access it, but still awesome that it's kicking around. When pulled up, this menu gives you access to a whole bunch of really cool things for the game. Arguably, the best thing here is the ability to enable flying mode, which of course lets you fly around the game. And this, coupled with disabling collision here, basically lets you get anywhere you want real quick. And of course, lets you go places you normally wouldn't be able to. Then next on this menu, we see the option to toggle game clock running. Now this doesn't seem to have any real functionality now, but this was obviously for the mechanic we've discussed where the time would constantly progress, so I guess this would have let you stop and start that. And similarly next, this box lets you set the in-game time to anything you want. And what's cool about this is it actually affects the layout of the game to how it appears at a given time. For example, if I set the time to 2am, these barriers will appear here, blocking off access to the other floors of the atrium. A pretty handy tool for testing how stuff appears at different times in the game. Next up here is an option to enable cloaking. Now although I thought this would maybe hide the player from the animatronics, this doesn't seem to have any effect, so this appears to be some sort of scrapped mechanic in the game. Next is unlimited stamina, which is pretty self-explanatory, but let me tell you, unlimited sprinting sure is handy. And next is giving the player unlimited faz watch power. Now, in the final game, the Faz Watch never loses power, so I guess this was yet another scrapped mechanic where you'd have to recharge the watch, much like the flashlight. Then next are options for setting the Faz Watch's battery level, again unused, as well as Freddy's battery level. 
Then we got some options for the AI animatronics. You can toggle spawning them in areas as you unlock them, toggle between the shattered versions of the main three hostile animatronics, as well as enable an ability to be able to see the animatronics highlighted in the game. This lets you see them through walls, and it also has text above them indicating which area they are currently roaming in. Additionally, with this feature enabled, I also noticed little question marks found on the floor all over the place. I couldn't really figure out what they did, but there certainly were a lot of them. Next is a really cool option, and this is for a scrapped vanity meter that shows up on screen. It's still in what looks to be a placeholder state as the graphics look definitely unfinished and it doesn't seem to have any sort of functionality in this state, though this debug menu does let you adjust it to whatever you want. Well, it turns out that this is yet another scrapped mechanic, big surprise, this time from the survival mode which again I'll go into more detail in the next video. Anyways, back to the debug menu here, next are some buttons that let you both unlock everything in the game, as well as re-lock it up. And this basically lets you have every single item in the game, both used and unused. Teleport here lets you teleport to whichever X, Y, and Z coordinates you want to in the map. You can toggle a display for showing your current X, Y, and Z coordinates, and this will also bring up the name of the room you are currently in. This option lets you toggle a display that will show you all the different maps that are loaded in at any given time, which I thought was kind of cool to see. This enable all inputs mode doesn't really seem to do anything. You can change your security level to whatever you want here. Gameplay trailer mode no longer seems to work, but I assume it might have changed the lighting in the game to match the level that was seen in the game's trailers. You can change the FOV to basically whatever you want, with some even extreme numbers that make the game nauseating, or just peace out altogether. See you later, I guess. You can also disable lighting, display the game's frame rate, toggle some graphic settings, and there's also this indicator here that's checked off as soon as you enter a hiding spot in the game. I assume this was somehow associated with the one achievement in Security Breach that you get for completing the game without ever using a hiding spot. Then next, Survival Item Locations doesn't work in normal play, but it certainly does in the cut survival mode, which again, stay tuned for that. And then, the rest of the options on the screen don't seem to work or currently have an unknown effect, like showing collision, light map density, and pre-computed visibility. Many of the scrapped mechanics seen on this debug menu, like the Fazwatch power and cloaking ability, must have been scrapped closer to the game's release, since they appear to have been far enough along in development that the devs were already testing them. Now, that's a lot of debugging stuff already, but hey, that was only the first tab on this menu here. Next, we move on to the Inventory tab, and this gives you a big ol' list of every single item that's in the game, both used and unused, and you can give yourself said items by simply ticking these boxes. And while we're talking about the items here, let's go over all of the items that aren't normally obtainable in the game. For equipment, found unused, there's both Helpy and Nightmare Helpy, as seen in FNAF VR. Then for food, there's the Fizzy Faz Monty Mystery Mix, I guess an early version of the Monty Mystery Mix, as well as a baking bag with the following description. A bag full of everything you need to make a pizza. Fazbear not responsible for injuries if not used for pizza baking. And this seems to have been meant to be part of either the Pizza Bot segment or yet another scrapped mission. For trophies, there's a Fazer Tag Champion Badge. And then finally for clothes, we got the Cube of Testing. Thingamabob, Strange Cube, Wallet, Crash Coin, Faz Frost, Ultra Rare Items 1 through 9, Rare Items 5 through 9, as well as everyone's favorite, Uncommon Item 12. Now, some of these, like the Faz Frosting, aren't clothes, so it's strange they're categorized as such. And other things, like the Thingamabob and Cube of Testing, definitely seem like test items with some awesome placeholder names. And just speculating here, but the wallet might have also been for a scrapped mechanic of purchasing stuff with coins or something from the sales bots. Not really sure why else you would need to get a wallet in the game. I wish there was a bit more context as to what these items might have been meant for, if anything, but hey, on the flip side, it's funny to see the images of these items just defaulting to item image missing or a white rectangle. Anyways, back again to the debug menu, next tab up is Freddy Gregory, and here you can toggle various abilities for yourself. 
You can toggle Freddy's upgrades from the other animatronics, the ability to call and enter and exit Freddy, as well as the ability for Gregory to crouch, as well as what looks to be yet another scrapped mechanic, Gregory's Sight ability. Since it's no longer currently functional in the game, it's unknown exactly what this was. But my best guess would be an ability to briefly be able to see outlines of animatronics or prizes through walls or something, maybe similar to the other debug feature we went over earlier. On to the next tab, here we got missions. As the name implies, here you can check off which missions you want the game to think you've completed or not. Additionally, on the top right of this menu are various buttons that are supposed to take you to a certain part of the game. The Monty, Chica, and Roxy boss buttons work as you'd expect and take you to their respective boss battle areas. And then, unlike how we saw it on the minigames menu, the Vanny battle here actually works, but unfortunately it just takes you back to the Phaser Blast area in the game, and then Burn Trap battle warps you to the elevator you take down to the underground pizzeria. Then next, we have the Instruction Cards tab, and as the name suggests for this, here you can cycle through all the different graphics for the various instruction pop-ups you see throughout the game. This includes upgrading Freddy, how to crouch, etc. Not super useful, but still cool to be able to peep through all these different graphics. And last up for this debug menu is the Other tab, and here, in addition to just being able to close out of the debug menu, you can also play around with various graphic settings. You can have the game run a hardware benchmark to, I guess, optimize the graphic for one's given hardware. You can set the visual quality, ray tracing, and DLSS levels. And lastly, you can also set the game to run at the graphic settings that are used for both the PS4 and 5. I assume these were probably used by the developers to check to see if all the different areas could run well enough for the PlayStation hardware. Honestly, this overall was one of the most robust debug modes I think we've ever seen on the series to date. In addition to the awesome ability to just fly around and explore of course, there's just so many different things to toggle and play around with here. Definitely one of, if not the best debug modes I've ever gotten to use. And here we'll wrap things up for this video. Like I mentioned several times, I'll be making a video dedicated to the Scrap Survival Mode in the very near future, so be sure to be on the lookout for that one real soon. Till then though, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and as always, I will see you in a bit.